All right, cheers, and welcome back, Internet, to Modern Horror Unscripted. Today's movie is Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. Uh, first thing I want to do, and I don't know if this is going to come across, but I've got the Blu-ray for this. has this kind of cool holographic cover. All right, so Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, is kind of a spin-off from the main series. It doesn't really have much of anything to do with the whole Katie and Christy uh, storyline. And it is the first movie of the series actually directed by longtime series writer Chris Landon. And it is set at an indeterminate time. I don't, you know, there's probably a timestamp in there, but I don't entirely remember. It's set some point after uh, Paranormal Activity 2. So this movie is, is set in a much more urban setting than the, the main Paranormal Activity uh, series. And I think almost the entire cast is, is Hispanic. Some of them almost stereotypically so. All right, so this one starts off with uh, the main character, uh, Jesse, graduating from, I believe, high school, and his dad is filming him. He thinks the camera is so cool that he kind of buys his own uh, from a pawn shop. He pawns something, I don't entirely remember what. And he buys he buys this camera, and he just sort of kind of does random. The, you know, a lot of the beginning of this movie is kind of random post high school hijinks. So he's got this this random handy cam, and they've got a GoPro, and they're kind of just you know filming jackass stunts, or you know weird little vignettes where he's dancing with his his chihuahua until eventually their neighbor or like a downstairs neighbor in their apartment complex apparently has something to do with the the, the cult, the Coven of Witches, from the main Paranormal Activity storyline. I don't entirely know what. It's a little bit confusing uh, how it actually relates, but basically what spurs this whole thing is they have a really strange encounter with uh, their class valedictorian, who has apparently been marked by this witch downstairs, and he, he kills her one night to try to, I guess, attempt to save himself from becoming taken over or possessed by the demon. And after that happens, our main characters, Jesse and Hector and Marisol, break into uh, Anna's, the witch's Anna's apartment and find a spell book. And then for some ungodly reason decide that it's a great idea to go to a church and actually attempt one of the spells. Awesome, guys. So, so they actually... They do this. They do this spell, and it works, and it conjures the demon, who then proceeds to um, possess Jesse. And at some point, Jesse becomes, you know, Jesse goes to the coven, becomes completely taken over, and uh, the perspective switches to Hector. And then the movie goes completely nuts. So, see, the the class valedictorian um, was kind of the straight younger brother, and his older brother was is this this big gangbanger in in one of the big gangs downtown so they get in touch with him at um because he's trying to find his brother and they're trying to figure out what's going on with jesse and their paths kind of converge so they hook up and they go with this mexican gang to the coven's house armed to the teeth <laughs> and the end of the movies or, almost the end of the movie is this amazing sequence where they're running around kind of this compound with shotguns just blasting witches away. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, but it is amazing to see. But obviously, you know, there are too many witches or they have magic or, you know, it doesn't work. You know, they, they don't get, they don't, they don't get Jesse back, nothing, nothing good happen. So unfortunately, for one reason or another, their assault on the witch's compound here obviously fails. But Hector finds a magic door. Not kidding. Hector finds a magic door to, and steps through it to try to get away from demonic Jesse. And ends up in Katie and Mika's house on the last night of the original Paranormal Activity. Right at the ending scene. He wanders into their kitchen and Katie is just standing there. And this is the other side of what we saw in that footage. Where Katie starts screaming, Mika comes down the stairs. And while Mika is trying to beat up this panicked kid who's suddenly appeared in his kitchen, Katie steps and then Hector runs away and Demonic Jesse is there and it ends. It's almost, it's almost silly, but it's just amazingly circular how it tries to connect. And at one point, they actually also meet Allie Ray from Paranormal Activity 2, who shows up 
to sort of give them all the lowdown on the cult. Uh, so this movie does kind of raise a couple of questions that confuses the main the main mythology. What we've established mostly in Paranormal Activity 2 and I think a little bit of 3 as well is that somewhere way back when somebody in Katie and Christie's family line had made a deal for wealth and power. And the trade in that deal was for the next male heir born in that family, which obviously didn't happen until Hunter showed up. But in all of those movies, it's the family members, it's the girls, it's Katie and Christy who get possessed by the demon, not the kid. So why in, in this movie are the guys the ones being possessed? Apparently the mothers are volunteering for the witches in the coven to have their unborn children marked. I guess for for possession so is is this related is this a way to short circuit the provision in that was established in number two where you could move the demon off from one person to another except it had to be a blood relative it's just a little kind of inconsistency with the established rules that I don't entirely understand but where the movie does actually succeed is that we're back to one camera that's it. And it's mostly all, all handheld, but they make attempts to put it down at, at sensible times. And when they do actually put the camera down, they get some of the, the creepier parts of this movie. Um, you know, like there, there's one scene where Jesse and Hector go to a party and try to, and try to pick up some girls who they then take back to uh, an abandoned apartment. While Jesse is off getting something, the camera is just kind of down next to the, the girl who gets attacked. Or, you know, they'll, they'll set the camera down and you'll actually, it'll be nothing for a little while, and then all of a sudden, there's a trap door in the floor and, and uh, Oscar, the, the class valedictorian, like, crawls out and runs away. The, but the points that the movie hits more often, it's more often kind of silly and tongue-in-cheek than it is actually scary. What puts it above Paranormal Activity 4, which is kind of silly unintentionally, is that the story isn't as as strange. The story has its own bit of wackiness with the assault on the witch's coven at the end. I don't think we're supposed to take that seriously anymore, so I think the movie is just like, yeah, you know what, let's just have a little bit of fun. Whereas Paranormal Activity 4 wanted to actually be a serious movie and just utterly failed at it. So at this point, that is the most current Paranormal Activity movie. That's where we're up to. The Ghost Dimension will be finishing up the Katie and Christie storyline, and hopefully it does that well. The way that I would rank all the movies so all the movies so far is that the first one is number one. Paranormal Activity three follows closely behind that, and then there's a gap for Paranormal Activity two, then the marked ones, and then Paranormal Activity four is is the worst of a lot. And that's all that I can think to say for Paranormal Activity the marked ones. Obviously, check back later. I'll probably update this at some point with my thoughts on the Ghost Dimension whenever that comes out. Obviously, I'm recording this beforehand. So cheers, folks. See you there. Thank you.